at least five minutes before I can begin. Laurent Gou, coming from France. Uh, I'm a member of the security team called Airstack. Uh, you can check airstack.org. And a member of the steering, co steering committee of the Honeynet project. And today I'm going to talk about uh, digital active self defense. Uh, so that's a turbo talk. We have only 20 minutes. So that's, that's not so easy. Um, I will talk about that also uh, during DEF CON with more, more time. But that's, uh, that's a very huge uh, field of research. So, OK. Uh, some, refer some, uh, some of my references um, are just here. Um, we'll talk about that after that. OK, here is a summary. Uh, first, um, we, we have three questions uh, during this talk. The first question is, why should we uh, react to an attacker, for example? Uh, why should we try to uh, do some retaliation and uh, try to hack back an attacker? Okay. The second question will be, uh, do we have the right Oh, may we have the right sometime, uh, for example, to hack back someone, uh, and so on. And then uh, the third question will be, uh, how should we try to uh, set up, for example, a system that could be able to react to uh, some uh, um, known attacks, for example, and then we'll be able to conclude. So <clears throat> if you look at the current threats over the internet, um, we have no limita limitation um, for the white hat. If, you, if you're trying, for example, to harden your network, uh, current solutions uh, might not be enough uh, innovative to block uh, most uh, known or unknown attack. Uh, it, it might depend. So, and um, uh, if you look at laws, sometimes laws fail for certain kind of activities. And um, if you look at the cost of cyber threats, that's, that's a big problem when you uh, work in a big company. Um, when you look at that, there is a natural temptation, which is, what about fighting back attackers? What about trying to destroy, for example, the computer of a black hat that got an access on a web server, something like that? That's a natural te te temptation, but that's, that might be illegal. So there are not so many solutions that use active countermeasure counter capabilities. And uh, to me, that's an interesting field of research and development. Um, so as I said, though so, so we use more and more security technologies, there are still security problems. Uh, if you look at confidentiality, integrity, availability, copyright, uh, information assurance, uh, you have external threats and internal threats. So we use firewall, proxies, hardened services, authentication, in-depth protection. You still have many problems, OK? And you want to find new possibilities to block that. So we are moving from hardening to uh, reaction. A lot of technology might be used to block every traffic, like routers, firewall, proxies. Uh, and you want to allow the minimum that is needed, OK? But though you use those technologies, the so aggressors, still find solutions like bouncing in by using, for example, byte security rules, bugs with zero day and stuff like that. And they also are able to get access inside the minimum that is accepted, uh, for example, by targeting specific services or end users with stupid clients not updated uh, and stuff like that. So people said, OK, we have firewall. We have intrusion detection system. What about trying to use, for example, some kind of countermeasure with, for example, intrusion prevention or specific intrusion detection system? OK, so why, why getting sign of an attack uh, with, for example, IDS? People said, what about trying to use security resource to respond by trying to stop the attack? Uh, that was a good idea, but there are many drawbacks. So from hardening to reaction, what about talking about active defense? Usual methods uh, will not always work uh, to block attack. OK, we, we can, for example, block incoming traffic, apply rate limitation, divert the traffic, use fake responses. And those technologies are very interesting. But the question is, should we use more aggressive methods? For example, that's, I'm talking about self-defense. Some, someone is trying to fight you and you want to fight back, okay? 
So we could think about technologies that could use, for example, uh, counter-strike capabilities to disable, destroy, or control the remote uh, computer of the attacker. So warning, I'm not a legal expert, okay? And uh, if you're a legal expert, uh, that's, that's uh, you're lucky because this is very difficult, uh, a very, very difficult field. And uh, there might be legal issues uh, different depending on the country where you live, so uh, be aware. Uh, so now, um, we know that we want to, for example, create our own system to fight back, okay? The question is, so we know why we do want to do that. The question is, is it legal? So, if we talk about digital self-defense, uh, self-defense usually occurs when someone is threatened with imminent bodily, bodily harm. And this uh, concept might be applied to avoid injury to property. So you might say that computers are some kind of property. So these rules could be applied to the computer world, but uh, that's, that's not sure. So the requirement is uh, you have uh, necessity. So you don't have to, uh, to have another choice uh, you, you, to, um, you have to, uh, that's, that's, you, you have to, uh, uh, this is your uh, last solution, okay? So, we will talk about that after that. Also, uh, your response has to be proportional. Uh, so, the force you will use to fight back the aggressor will have to be proportional uh, to the attack. And this is something that might be very difficult. And the threat has to be unlawful. So, we talk about proportional response. What could mean proportional? Proportional, uh, th there is a problem because uh, there is a risk of subjectivity of interpretation of this world. We have to create, for example, a classification of attacks to choose uh, the appropriate response. For example, uh, something like, um, okay, uh, if someone scans you, is it proportional to say that you want to get a remote shell on him? Probably no, okay? So the problem is that if you look at the security uh, field and the, all the families of the attack, that's very difficult to create uh, trees of um, uh, action that can be done uh, depending on the attack, the incoming attack on your network, okay? So once you are able to create a kind of classification to prove that your response is proportional, you'll be able uh, to take a decision. The problem is the adequate alternatives. You have to prove that you had no other choice, and that's very difficult, because experts could argue that many other possibilities might be used. For example, uh, you could say, okay, why didn't you disconnect the victim? I mean, uh, for example, someone attacked you, why didn't you just disconnect the web server? Why did you try to uh, get a shell uh, with zero day against uh, the script key? Uh, and you will say, uh, okay, it was an adequate alternative, but the problem is that self-defense electric does not require the victim to back away. And such a disconnection would result, result in a kind of denial of service on the victim. So. That's, that's difficult to justify that you don't have adequate alternative, but sometimes it can be, um, a p it depends on the context of your company. So uh, how can we explain that the Counter-Strike 2 were able to fight back the attacker and that they could not block the attack? This is something difficult. When you're talking about self-defense, to me, um, this is the most difficult thing to uh, justify. Okay. If we look at information warfare, there is no official and uh, legal issues. There is no official uh, uh, recognition uh, by the Hague uh, and the Geneva Convention uh, about the information warfare. So there is no real example of act of war on the, the cyber battlefield. And there is no real legal consideration. So uh, what about uh, retaliation uh, from a legal point of view? If we think about uh, information warfare, that's something that, that is not uh, really clear. 
uh, maybe in the future, but uh, that's not clear. So let's talk about self-defense and technical um, considerations. There is an action, for example, against a victim, and you want to react. That might be the victim or something else that will react. Uh, the action can come, for example, from something like usual clients, scanners, explode, try on clients, and stuff like that. So we said um, we want to strike back. Uh, first of all, we have to identify the tools, the methods, and the sources. This is something that might be very difficult. You need tools like IDS, logs, network captures, and the trouble is that you have to avoid spoofing. What if, for example, someone spoofs, uh, I don't know, White House, that gov, uh, and uh, attack your uh, computer. Will you strike back against whitehouse.gov? No, that's stupid. So that might be, this first part might be very difficult, OK? And then you have to take a decision. So sometimes you will want to have a, something like a white list, a white list or a black list, uh, to say, for example, that this destination won't be in the list of the computer that uh, will receive a strike back, for example. And then you'll be able to strike back, OK? So as a new requirement, um, that might be very interesting to get something like a graduated response with different level of reaction to strike back uh, in order to uh, propose a proportional response. So um, in order to be able to do that, you will have to be able, for example, to determine um, the level of hostility or the level of threats, uh, incoming threats. Uh, to your uh, computers. For that, you'll need uh, something like intrusion detection uh, to uh, be able to say that this is a very big attack or this is a small attack, something like that. Uh, OK. So profiling the attack is something that might be possible with some tools, but sometimes you, you might have a uh, false positive. Um, but if you look at, for example, signatures from intrusion detection tools like Snout, for example, uh, sometimes you can say, okay, this is a probe, this is a scanner, this is an exploit, uh, this is a client, uh, or uh, sometimes with other tools, we, you will be able to, uh, to, to detect malware, worms, denial of service, stuff like that. And then you will be able to choose the appropriate strike back. Uh, there is a real life example of something with different level of reaction. Uh, which is DEF CON. I found it funny to, to talk about DEF CON here. Um, it's OK. So what about fighting back usual clients? Um, for example, imagine someone trying to uh, play with SQL injection uh, towards your own IIS uh, web server, if you are courageous, for example, and use this technology. No, I joke. Um, for example, if you see that the guy is using Internet Explorer, uh, most of the time, people say, you know, there are so many vulnerabilities in Internet Explorer, and most of the time, Internet Explorer are not well configured uh, in most companies and stuff like that. What if you are able, for example, to disable the, the client, or what if you are able, for example, to get the email address of the attacker uh, in your logs just by playing with, for example, the small exploits uh, to rob the Internet Explorer? That would be funny, okay? Is it legal or not? OK, that's, we talk about that. That's something very difficult. And you can attack back many kind of clients, like SSH client, mail client, DNS resolver, IRC client. Uh, if you are interested about stuff like that, I talked about that during a, a few conferences in the past. Just take on, check on rstsek.org and uh, grab the files. Um, but that's a turbo talk, so I have to uh, do something small. Um, then, if you are able, for example, to abuse a security vulnerability in such a, uh, a client, you'll be able, for example, to create um, a remote crash, or you'll be able to get a control of the remote computer. That might be very interesting for self-defense. But filing back usual clients, uh, even if it's funny when I talk about that like that, uh, to me, it's funny. Uh, this is not so easy because, uh, for example, if you are trying to fight back a listening client, I, I'm calling this a listening client, like, for example, a mail client, you'll be able 
uh, to try multiple attack. You will have multiple times to, to try to fight back, for example, this attacker. So that might be easy. But sometimes the people are using, for example, clients with, for example, uh, in, uh, a web client. Uh, those are incoming clients where you will be able um, to strike back only, uh, for example, during a specific phase uh, of the protocol. And this will be a one-shot operation. And this is very difficult. And moreover, this is very difficult because you need, for example, to know uh, sometimes the operating system, the hardware, uh, the version of the client, and stuff like that. So many technologies might help you to do that, but there might be fast positive, and that's not so easy. I have tried many stuff on uh, my own network. Um, I have created many tools. Uh, that's very difficult sometimes. The most easiest things I saw about that is fighting back worms, but um, uh, I talked about that during the Black Hat uh, Asia um, uh, last December. Uh, just grab the PPT and you will see. That's, that's, it was easy, for example, to fight back um, MS Blast. Very easy. So I wanted to talk about specific opportunities, which are Onipot and dealing with uh, internal threats, which is something different. But uh, about set defense, those um, things are very interesting. If you look at Honeypot, a Honeypot is a security resource whose values lies in being probe attack or compromise to quote Led Spisner, the HoneyNet leader. Uh, so this is a non-production system, and they are used to delude attackers. Okay, so incoming traffic is suspicious. So if you, you won't have most of the time, you won't have fast positive, and if incoming traffic is suspicious. Uh, for each packet, for example, or each session, if you try to fight back, you could say, okay, this, this should be uh, an incoming uh, suspicious traffic. So I had the right, that's not sure, I had the right, for example, to use an aggressive defense system. So just wanted to talk about that. Uh, this is honeypot might be a specific case. But more interesting is dealing with the internal threats. Sometimes you have official remote administrator access on your own computer in your uh, company. Uh, so that might be very interesting to try to react to attack coming uh, inside your network, for example, uh, because you will be able to stop processes, add firewall rules, reboot, halt, modify, file, patch, and stuff like that. So uh, most of the time, you have the right to pen test uh, your own computers. By saying your own computers, I'm talking about the computers that are under your uh, own, um, I would say, legal uh, responsibility. Okay. So if you have the right to pen test those computers, you have to attack. You have the right to uh, attack uh, those computers. And what about striking back against those computers? So we could say that. If active defense or safe defense technologies are not yet um, legal, okay, because they are very dark side, uh, if you look at legal issues, um, you can say that if you want to work on those technologies, you can say that those technologies might be applied on a local area network. And this, is, this might be very interesting because you'll be able to catch corporate hackers uh, Zlot end users and people like that. For example, if you are doing outsourcing and that you don't really trust uh, the people, you might use such technologies to react with, for example, zero second or almost zero second uh, response. Uh, that might be very interesting. The trouble is, from what I have tried on my own network at home, uh, the trouble is that spoofing is easier on the LAN. Uh, especially at layer two, and you might have, for example, a problem with layer two attack on a local area network. So think about that if you're trying to create your own uh, self-defense system, but this might be very interesting. Um, we have real example in real life, like 
code rate two, as someone wrote an anti code rate two default.ida script um, to strike back, uh, for example, uh, against a remote computer uh, infected by code rate two. Um, most of the time, when you think about attacks over TCP sessions, um, you can believe that uh, this might be the real source most of the time. But this, this is not sure, of course, uh, because the guy could guess, for example, the sequence number, stuff like that. But most of the time, over a TCP session, uh, this is easier to take the decision of striking back. If you look at, for example, UDP flows, this is more difficult. And the trouble is that for sometimes, with only one packet, someone will be able to attack. And you won't be able to guess the real source of the attackers. If you look at, for example, David Litchfield exploit with MS SQL Server, it was really difficult to take a, tech, uh, a decision. There is a company which is called Symbiot. Uh, just check symbiot.com. Um, I'm not working from them, so <laughs> that's not a, an advertisement. But this is very interesting because they wrote uh, a tool that propose something to strike back. Um, to me, this is something that is really fresh and new because uh, this is a commercial project. So that might be very interesting. The trouble is limitations. The so limitation will be imagination, laws, and techniques. So I'll talk about this uh, before. The possible goals for such technologies is to stop or limit the attackers. At least one attack, or one attack and next attacks. You also want, may want to gather more information about the aggressor, for example, to do a trial. Um, there is, for example, um, many possibilities with passive method, active methods, and stuff like that. And also, you might want, and this is the best, uh, or the most funny, you might want to take the control of the remote computer. Uh, for example, to add specific um, special mark on the computer, uh, there is a um, a product with a patent, which is called uh, Spectre 7, which is a honeypot that tries that. Um, you might want to gather more information by taking the remote, a remote shell, for example, and follow a chain of owned computer um, that are used to bounce, uh, but sometimes this is illegal. And you might want to uh, definitely stop the threats by playing with uh, stuff like that. But we have technical limitations. Um, Sometimes you won't have remote exploits to get an access, for example, to the incoming attacker. So this is not a new solution that will always work, but sometimes it may work. Uh, it depends. So that's, that's a problem. Another problem is dealing with false positive. Uh, another problem is dealing with spoofing, as I said. And also, imagine what would happen if, for example, a company uh, is spoofed, for example, and he's attacking another company. This company is striking back the first company. And the first company also now is striking back the first company. So we may have collateral damage. And that might be very, uh, a very big problem. So as a conclusion, from if you look at technological uh, issues, uh, this might be very interesting. Because you have the feeling of doing something right. And this might be a new possibility to explore in order to protect an infrastructure. If you look at more uh, organizational uh, issues, uh, you have problem with legacy. And this is very difficult. And also, uh, but we said that Kunda Strike could be uh, used to target internal computers. So that might be very interesting. Because this is a kind of advanced intrusion prevention system if you play with that on your own computer. Uh, for in information warfare, we all know. And one problem uh, people said to me uh, when I release some codes uh, for stuff like that is uh, back at people. Because some people said that that could be used, for example, to create stuff like evil honeypots. And that would be yet another way to attack, like with passive attackers and stuff like that. So if you have any questions. I'm sorry, the website? Uh, my website is oops, rstack.org, uh, like the TCP flags. OK. Dot, dot, dot. OK, rstack.org.
Um, I talked about that during uh, Hope Hackers on Planet Earth in New York three weeks ago, um, about uh, honeypot and retaliation. And um, so I would like to 